Good evening and thank you for joining us for Kremte News at 6 tonight. I'm Mark Hanrahan. It's good to have you here. I'm Whitney Ward. We begin tonight with some shocking information about the dump truck driver who crashed into the Freya Dutch Bros coffee stand on Friday afternoon. Court documents show that driver admitted to using meth the night before the crash. Several people were injured, including a barista who broke her hip. Kremte News Amanda Rowley talked to that employee today about what happened that afternoon. Amanda? Well, Chelsea Boss is finally back home recovering after two days in the hospital. She told me her pelvis is fractured and has a puncture wound from that bone. The doctors say she is expected to recover since she is so young, but she has a long road of physical therapy ahead of her. My first real job, so that was exciting too to have it somewhere that I actually really wanted to work. <laughs> on Friday afternoon, Chelsea Boss was one of five people working at Dutch Bros on Freya when a dump truck driver pulling a trailer destroyed their building. I remember when I got pulled out, they thought there was blood all over me, so they cut my pants off, but it was just like syrup that exploded. Luckily, luckily, she and her co-workers were all in an area farthest from where the truck hit, which is crazy that I got the most injured. I just remember looking over and seeing one of my coworkers like look at me like all like bug eyed. And then I like saw the front of the truck like it was all super fast. So there wasn't a lot that I really saw. She still has insulation in her hair from the building debris. Chelsea and her mother, Michelle, believe it is a miracle no one was severely hurt. You always worry about your, you know, kid working somewhere like that and being robbed. You know, that happens a lot, but something like this is just so unreal. Yeah, one of my coworkers said that she felt like she was pulled away from the window and the other coworkers that were in there with us were like, we didn't do that. McGavin Madrain admitted to driving his truck into the coffee stand. He is in jail for vehicular assault. New court documents reveal he also admitted to using meth the night before the crash. He also has four felonies and 10 misdemeanors in Idaho, with charges including DUIs, reckless driving, and not operating a commercial vehicle in a safe manner. The company he was driving for did not want to talk to us. They referred us to their insurance company, who also did not comment. What would you want to say to the driver? That he's an idiot. <laughs> just want him to hear every detail of what he's done and feel the same pain in a way guilt wise you know I mean yeah. I don't wish anybody death or pain but you know first time offense is one thing this is multiple offenses so many people that probably could have been hurt or maybe have been who knows um but this is my daughter now, there is something we want to clarify about this crash that you may have seen. So Friday afternoon, there were two similar trucks with similar names at the scene. So we want to be clear that this truck, Bailey's Construction, was not involved in the crash. This truck over here, the one that's obviously not clean and, and destroyed and among the rubble here, was involved in the crash, but that is Bailey Construction. This truck here, Bailey's Construction, they were only in the area because they were working on a project in an area at that time. Reporting in the studio tonight, Amanda Rowley, Creme 2 News. Good to differentiate that. Thank you very much, Amanda. Well, with COVID cases spiking, some entertainment venues are now tightening restrictions. This comes as Washington put its indoor mask mandate back into place. Creme 2's Ian Smay is now live in the newsroom with what to expect at those local entertainment venues when it comes to vaccine requirements. Ian? Whitney, just yesterday, the company that sells tickets for the concerts at the Riverfront Park Pavilion announced new requirements to attend those shows. This comes just days before Counting Crows is set to perform at the pavilion. Here's what you should know before you plan on attending a show at our local entertainment venues. If you have tickets for a concert at the Riverfront Park Pavilion, there are some changes you need to know. AEG Presents, the company who sells tickets for the pavilion concerts, sent an email to ticket holders yesterday with changes to its COVID policies. From now until October 1st, those attending a concert at the pavilion will have to show proof of full vaccination or a negative COVID-19 test from the last 72 hours to get in. The first show this will impact is this Saturday's performance by Counting Crows. Starting October 1st, the testing option will be dropped, meaning you must be fully vaccinated to attend a show. This comes as the FDA granted full approval to the Pfizer vaccine. The company also says that if a local government decides to enforce a vaccine mandate for public events before October 1st, they will follow suit. Acceptable forms of proof include your vaccine card or a digital copy of the card, such as a photo. But when it comes to shows at venues such as the Spokane Arena, the First Interstate Center for the Arts, or the Spokane Convention Center, you won't have to be vaccinated for now. Those venues are managed by the Spokane Public Facilities District. 
They told Krim that there are currently no plans to require a COVID-19 vaccine to attend shows, such as the Jason Aldean concert or the Seattle Kraken preseason NHL game next month. However, like the concerts at the Pavilion, the Public Facilities District said they would follow a mandate from Governor Jay Inslee requiring full vaccination for public events. Another local entertainment venue, the Fox Theater, says they will be meeting soon about vaccination requirements and plan to have a decision made next week. What about Northern Quest's policies? According to their website, they are asking people who aren't fully vaccinated to wear a mask when attending shows. The Bing Crosby Theater in Spokane has possibly the most strict policy currently. According to their website, you must have proof of vaccination by either showing your vaccination card or having a photo of the card. You can also show a negative COVID-19 test, but it has to be from within 48 hours before the show. There are still a number of places to get vaccinated against COVID-19 in the Spokane area, including health care providers and places such as pharmacies. For a full list of those locations, you can visit the Spokane Regional Health District's website at srhd.org. In the newsroom tonight, Ian Smay, Krem 2 News. Ian, thank you very much. All right, the Grand County Health District reporting 12 more people have died from the coronavirus in the last 24 hours. We are told most of them did have underlying health conditions. This brings the total Grant County COVID death toll now to 146. Taking a look now at Spokane County's daily COVID data, there were 326 new COVID cases today alone, with 12 new COVID-19 related deaths reported this past week. And there are currently 184 COVID-19 patients hospitalized in Spokane County. And as always, we understand this is a lot of information and it changes daily. So for the very latest on local COVID numbers, as well as those vaccine requirements, just text the word COVID to 509-448-2000. All right, let's talk weather, shall we? Temperature is feeling like fall this week. Let's head on over to Chief Meteorologist Tom Sherry. Just spraying into action right now. And Tom, my goodness, I got to say I'm loving these temperatures right now. Yeah, me too. I, I admit the overnight lows <laughs> get a little bit on the chilly side, but the daytime highs are fabulous. 74 degrees. We had a high today of 75. Yeah, that's below the average high this time of year of 82. But at the same time, it was just fabulous in the form that we, you know, we've had 100 degree temperatures and set a new record for 90 degree days. So yes, I'm enjoying the milder weather. No cloud cover over the Pacific Northwest. We'll look for an overnight glow of 50 tonight, 80 the expected high tomorrow. So, but I do think it'll be mostly cloudy tomorrow until we get into the afternoon hours. Weekend is on point, as Mr. Hanrahan would say. 78 degrees on Saturday, 84 expected Sunday. Here on the 6 o'clock broadcast, we bring you a 10-day outlook, and I'll do that for you coming up in just about 6 or 7 minutes. That is on point, Tom. Yeah. My goodness. All right, thank you very much. Well, COVID-19 hospitalizations are on the rise all across the Inland Northwest. Coming up after the break, we dive into the data as Kootenai Health ties their peak of hospitalizations and Spokane County's numbers also continue to rise.